Hello guys, this is Minu92 for Productive Gamers and for the next few weeks I'm going to be showing you a new set of tutorials based on Visual Basics and uh, some of you asked me to, to do some more VB and with Summer of Code just around the corner I felt it was the perfect opportunity to recreate HoloOS and my Visual Basic operating system so I'm going to be showing you how to do all that but before we get into it I would advise you just to create your own folder and just put all of your crap in there basically so you see I've made a load of assets already and we're going to be using these throughout and hopefully I'll be able to make these just before uh, each episode because then I won't have to uh, make them during the video. Okay, so for this I was just using GIMP which is the free version of Photoshop and uh, I think that is all you're going to need. Okay, so I'll get rid of that. We're going to set up a brand new Visual Basics project. Now, if you don't have this, you can just go on the internet on the MSDN Microsoft website and download Visual Basic 2010 Express. Um, now, you might be wondering why I've got Windows 8 and not using the Windows 8 version, and that is because I hate it, basically. It's, it's not user-friendly at all, and uh, I got really confused when I was trying to use it before. So, okay, we're going to start up a new one, and we're going to go Windows Forms Application and I'm just going to put the name of my project in if I can spell it properly okay and then we're going to set it as a Windows Forms application and hit OK but apparently I'm not allowed to have a colon in there so never mind I'll just do that perfect okay so throughout this series I'm going to be recreating the Hollow OS, and if you haven't seen it, at the end of the video, hit the one of the things on the outro, and you'll be able to uh, see how I made it before. Uh, now, what I want to do is today I'll just show you a couple of basics for Visual Basic, and uh, then we can get right into it on the next episode. So today we're going to be making a splash screen, and I've got to just about remember the size, and I think. You can make this however you want based on your uh, your own graphic sizes, but mine is 498 pixels by 305. So I'm gonna hit that in and do that. And okay, so when you open up Visual Basic for the first time, you'll get something that looks a bit like this, and you should have your main form area, your errors, properties, and solution explorer. And all we're really going to be interested in is the main viewing area and the properties. So you can go around and change everything, and for this we're going to call it Splash Screen. And then we're going to do that for the text as well. Uh, not that that really matters, because we're going to be getting rid of all this. And what we need to do if we try and find it like this we want form border style as none and then that gets rid of everything around the outside and then just to make sure everything's gone we need to try and find I think it's somewhere up here uh, show icon false this is just so in case there is any problem nothing will go wrong so we're going to set false to all of these. We don't want you to to alter anything. And we're also going to lock it. So you can't move it. So I can stay like that now. And all we're going to do is add in our graphics. So I'm going to go to background image and open up a local resource as one of my own. And that's going to be this one here. Now that doesn't look right in fact for some reason the splash screen has changed its own size so we can change that back to 496 no 400, 498 sorry and 305 and then as you can see we've got everything going in like that now all we want to do is add a couple of extra features to make this a bit more interesting than just having a graphic showing on the screen and before we do that we need to go to project at the top and go properties and then the startup form make sure that's selected as your splash screen and although this will say splash screen we're not going to use their default ones because they're terrible 
and you can't really alter them whatsoever, you've got to stick with how they are. Um, all we're going to do as well before we get down to it next episode, you can change all of your, your things here. So you can change your project and titles and everything, you can call it whatever you want. Um, and at the moment I think that's going to be it, so we can leave that like that and also I've created a icon so I'm going to look into my my folder where it is, and it's on my desktop and we're going to go to the file and it's this one here, now you see it only lets me choose a .ico file for it to work as a Windows application you need it to be this format and everything on your desktop is going to be that so make sure that's selected and you'll see it just pops up like that okay so now you can save that I want to make sure everything's saved and then you can hit this triple save there and that saves everything and we're going to want that to go into our documents and that's fine okay so back on here the only thing I really want to add is a progress bar to make it look like it's actually loading although it's not going to be but that really doesn't matter so you can drag one of them out of our toolbox which is this thing here where we've got loads of things that we're going to be using throughout the series and you select this and we can change the size and I think I'm going to try and roughly line it up underneath and I think it might look okay like that covering the entire entire edge of that and just to check that it is the right size you can line it up together and just alter it until it looks about right so I'm going to keep mine as something like that and then just pop it where you want it so for me that's just going to be down here and then on our properties we're going to change the marquee animation to 25 and that is basically it says the speed of the marquee animation in milliseconds so that's just how long and what space of this will actually be be flashing because if you think uh, with I'm not sure if the modern operating systems do this but definitely on XP you have the little bars loading up as it as it turns on and it's going to be something like that and it's just how much of the space is going to be dedicated for that so once you've done that double tap our form and it'll say splash screen load um, and also, so I don't get confused, I'm going to change our form and rename it splashscreen.vb like that and that'll change everything else so it'll be okay so now what I'm going to do is go into the the Kodi bits which we've got to do and in fact before that you can close down our options now we need to add a timer to say how long the progress bar is going to be filling so we're going to look down until we find a timer which is here and that's on the components tab so click somewhere on the form and you'll see we get that there so we're going to double click that one as well and that just gives us these two boxes for us to put in our code so now under our splash screen we're going to say timer one which is the one we just selected dot start now in Visual Basics you tend to finish a line of code with just parentheses or brackets and that's what we're going to do on this one now I hope you have at least some vague knowledge of Visual Basic because it will make the series a lot easier to for, for you to understand and uh, it'll mean there's less things to answer <laughs> okay so on our timer one dot tick, which is how like sort of each bit of time, each interval, which is a hundred milliseconds, we want it to do um, our progress bar one, which is the name of that, as you can see there, progress bar one dot increment. And then in brackets you can select however long you want it to, to increment, however much you want it to increment by. So I'm going to say for now um, something awkward like 3. And we can try that and obviously you can go back later and change everything depending on whether it works or not. And then we're going to say if progress bar 1 dot value 
equals 100, which is the maximum it can. It's like, imagine it in percentages. That's as much as it can go. Um, then we want to show, so we're going to say form. What, um, now this next bit, you've got to decide on the name of your next form, which for us is going to be login. So we're going to say login.show. Now it's going to throw up an error here because it doesn't exist at the moment, but it will do in a minute. And then finally, we want to say timer one dot stop, so it doesn't keep going on forever. And also me, and that means this form. So if if you wanted a different form to close, like we did here, you would say the name of that form. So we'll, for this one, we're going to say me, meaning splash screen dot close. And that should all work, apart from this saying that login doesn't exist. So we're going to create that now by going to projects. Add Windows Form, and then our Windows Form you can select there, and we're going to call it login, login.vb, and click Add. So now that exists, so we can go back to our code, and you see the error is now gone. So I'm going to save all of that, and we're going to debug. So now you see this loading up like that, and then hopefully the login would show well that's that's what's supposed to happen anyway so hang on let's try that again um okay so i've gone through all the code and i finally discovered it was nothing to do with the, the code was perfectly fine all you got to do if you had the same problem as me is go back into your properties and then select under starter uh, shutdown mode, go when startup form. No, go when la the last form closes because the problem was we had it on when the startup form closes, and obviously that this uh, splash screen is the startup form, and we'd ask that to close here. So as soon as that closed, the other one just wouldn't work. So now, with the last form closes, this should work fine. And I've put incrementing back to three, and you can just select any value; it really doesn't matter. And you see there. The login opens up as soon as we reach 100. Login. Perfect. Okay, so um, that is actually all I wanted to cover in this tutorial. So far, I've showed you how to set up your workspace and how to set up this splash screen that you can see here. So um, I think. That is probably all. Thanks guys for watching, and next week, or in the next episode, we're going to be covering how to make our login screen. And I've also got some new textures and graphics for that, so um, we'll get straight with that. And I'll show you how to create a advanced login, because unlike a lot of people who've made these Visual Basics OS's where you've got a specific username and password, in this one we'll be able to choose, you'll be able to make your own account, it'll be stored securely on your hard drive, and then if you ever want to change it, you can go back and edit it in the proper file. And uh, that I find just is a, lot, is a lot better than just having a specific one where you've got to be called this specific name. Um, so yeah, thanks guys for watching and see you next time.